Hello everyone. Today we are going to start the fifth week of this uh, course. So, this week's topic is matrix method of structural analysis of beam. Particularly in this lecture, we will talk about member stiffness matrix. You see, um, by now I believe you already have uh, you already have a sense of what is the philosophy behind matrix method of structural analysis and what are the steps involved uh, in this method. Just to uh, recall uh, all these steps, the summary of this is if you uh, if a structure is given to us, then the first thing we do is we discretize the structure, right? Discretize the structure means we make the structure, break the structure into pieces. And then uh, it also involves uh, uh, your numbering of the, uh, we, we need to identify the members, we need to identify the joints and then number them accordingly in discretization. And then once we discretize the structure, we calculate the stiffness matrix, construct the stiffness matrix for every elements, every member of the structure. Once the stiffness matrices for all the members are constructed, are written, the next thing is to, to impose the condition of the connectivity of different members, how the different members are connected to each other and that we do by assembling the stiffness matrices and that step after the assembling the stiffness matrix that we get is called global stiffness matrix. This is the stiffness matrix for the entire structure. Now, once the global stiffness matrix is, uh, is is obtained, the next step is we have to then apply the boundary conditions and uh, write the load vectors. Recall the global stiffness matrix, if we try to invert them, it is not invertible, it is a singular matrix, uh, which is the physical manifestation of this is if there is no constraint in the structure, the structure is unstable. Now, you have to make it stable, in this case we have to provide constraint. Uh, and then once the constraints are provided, then we also need to identify, write the load vectors. And then what we get is, we get the next step will be solution of this, uh, solution of, we, we write the all these in the system of equations, linear equations and finally we we'll solve them. Now this is the global stiffness matrix K and this is the, after the boundary conditions, the load vector is F. After the boundary condition, your stiffness matrix is reduced and this is the load vector and then we solve this equation, solve for the unknown displacements. Once we have the unknown displacement, next, next step is to find out other support reactions and the member forces. So, this is the basic steps involved in matrix method of structural analysis. Now, we already have demonstrated these steps for truss problem. This is the problem that we discussed in details in the previous, uh, in, in the last week, this week. This problem we have discussed already in the last week. Now, this week we discuss how to apply all these steps that we have, uh, uh, we just now uh, we revisited, uh, how to implement all these steps in the context of this kind of problem, the beam problems. And the next week we will do the similar exercise for frame problem, this one. So, let us start with this problem. Okay. Now, uh, in this week, in this lecture today, uh, particularly we will talk about these two steps, the discretization, these two steps for this week, discretization and member stiffness matrix. Next week, we will see, next class we will see how to assemble the stiffness matrices. Okay. So, let us demonstrate uh, the entire process through, through one example. Uh, Suppose this is a problem, it is just a representative problem, you can have any problem in beams. Okay. See one good thing about beam problem is unlike trusses and also unlike frames. Uh, you see in the truss your members are oriented in a different uh, direction, it could be vertical member, inclined member, even in frames you have members oriented in different configuration. And therefore, once you construct the matrix in local coordinate system, we need to transform them with respect to the global coordinate system, right? But here that step, that uh, exercise is not required because the beam always your orientation of the orientation of the member is always unidirectional, okay, in a particular direction, all these members. Now, so uh, this is taken a representative problem this is the problem. Since we are talking about uh, how to calculate the stiffness matrices first, let us remove the load uh, loads, we will come to that point later. So, remove the load and the next is identify the different members 
and the joins and number them accordingly. The members are this is say member number 1, member number 2, then member number 3 and member number 4. And then similarly, we have uh, join number 1, join number 2, join number 3, join number 4 and join number 5. Now, depending on the structures, we can have different number of members, different number of joints. Okay. So, once we have this, then in this in this problem, we have we have 4 members. So, let us isolate all these 4 members. Let and then if we do that, so these are all 4 members. The member number 1, the connectivity between connectivity is very important. Member number 1, the connectivity is it is between node number 1 and 2. Member number 3, it is between node number 3 and 3, 3 and 4 and member number 4 is between 4 and 5. Okay. Now, once we have that, what we have to do is we have to write stiffness matrix for each such member. We have to write the stiffness matrix for for this one say this is k1 and we have to write stiffness matrix for k2 and k3 and so on k4 and so on okay now let us take any arbitrary member any arbitrary member m which is connected between two points say ith point and jth point so if we do that take any arbitrary member say m uh, this is the connecting uh, uh, the connected between the connected between i and j points now before we uh, before we uh, before we see how to uh, what are the elements of the stiffness matrix it is important for us to understand or to define what are the degrees of freedom it has you see in if you know in two dimension in two dimension any object any any point if you take it has three degrees of freedom right it can displace in this direction it can displace in this direction and it can rotate like this so two translation in two directions and rotation about the third axis these are the three degrees of freedom we can have now let us take these three degrees of freedom at ith node we have three degrees of freedom and jth node also we have three degrees of freedom so suppose these three degrees of freedom sir ui vi theta i u and vi are the uh, translation in x and y direction uh, at ith point and theta i is the rotation with respect to the z axis and similarly at j point we have these three degrees of freedom please note here the the sign convention that we are taking sign convention is uh, your in vertical the translation in upward direction is taken as positive and then rotation about rotation in anti clockwise direction is taken as positive rotation and moment uh, an anti clockwise direction is taken as positive you can have your own sign convention but whatever sign convention you take you have to now you have to construct the stiffness matrix accordingly okay we have to be consistent with that sign convention so this is the sign convention that uh, we will be using for formulating the method now uh, here we make an assumption assumption is uh, there is no actual deformation if you see you recall in, in when we talked about truss uh, truss is all members are uh, all, uh, all members are two force members essentially every member is subjected to either compression or tension along the longitudinal axis so it has just it has just actual deformation now in this case no other deformation in truss member but in this case we assume there is no actual deformation no actual deformation takes place so if there is no actual deformation takes place the, then these degrees of freedom we can neglect okay so if we neglect the degrees of freedom associated with the actual deformation along the length of the beam then we are left with only 2 degrees of freedom per node will when we talk about frame problem then we we will not uh, neglect the actual deformation we will consider the actual deformation this is for beam we uh, neglect the actual deformation we will also see that if we have to consider actual deformation what would be the uh, what would be the changes required in stiffness matrix but for the time being there is no actual deformation so that degrees of freedom we can neglect so if we neglect that then we are left with only two degrees of freedom per node that is translation in vertical direction and then rotation about z axis now um, let us just for the ease of writing this expression, let us not use v i theta i and v j theta j and so on. Let us uh, let us use uh, uh, i 1 i 2 and j 1 j 2. So, i 1 is actually v 1 and i 2 is actually theta theta i and j 1 is v j and j 2 is theta j. Even more even simplifying that, 
uh, uh, will not uh, let us not even use i1 i2 and j1 j2 because writing expression every time i1 i2 j1 j2 would be tedious so let us take 1 2 and 3 4 so 1 2 is essentially the degrees of freedom at node i and then 3 4 are the degrees of freedom at node j so 1 and 3 are the translation and 3 and four, 2 and 4 are the rotations Okay. See, it will be easier for us to write the elements of those stiffness matrices uh, representing them. Now, what we are interested is to determine what is the, uh, what is the uh, form of the element stiffness matrix, member stiffness matrix for this given member. Now, uh, for different members, these nodes will be different. So, the same expression, we will find out a general expression uh, and then for different members depending on their uh, depending on their flexural rigidity, depending on their length, uh, we can have different values of the stiffness matrices. But we are now uh, in a process of uh, deriving a general form of stiffness matrix. So, by just looking at the structure, we can say the stiffness matrix size will be 4 by 4 because we have total 4 degrees of freedom and then uh, the form of the stiffness matrix will be something like this. So, this member stiffness matrix, these are the k1, k2, k11, k12 and these are the elements of the stiffness matrix. Now, these elements, understanding these elements is very important, we already discussed uh, in the previous week, just to again, again, again uh, for better comprehension of the all the discussion to follow, let us again revisit that. You see k11 is essentially, what is definition of stiffness is a load per unit displacement, right. Now, k11 is essentially this one is if I, if I, if I apply a unit uh, displacement uh, along the degrees of freedom 1, in this case the translation, then k11 is essentially is the forces developed in the first degrees of freedom. K it would it would be k21 please correct it then k21 will be the will be the force developed uh, along the degrees of freedom 2 k31 will be the force developed along the degrees of freedom 3 and k41 will be the degrees of force developed along the degrees of along the degrees of freedom 4 but all these will be due to the unit unit value of degrees of freedom 1 Okay, unit value of degrees of freedom 1. And similarly, if I give an unit rotation, suppose in degrees of freedom 2, if you give unit value along the degrees of freedom 2, degrees of freedom 2, then the force developed along the degrees of freedom 1 will be k12, force developed along the degrees of freedom 2 will be k22, force developed along the degrees of freedom 3 will be k32 and force developed along the degrees of freedom 4 will be k42. And similarly, all other elements are defined like this. So, what we are now interested to find out these elements. So, what we do is, now remember one thing, when I say that k11 is the uh, or for instance say k21, it is the force developed along degrees of freedom 2 due to the degrees of unit value of degrees of freedom 1. When we say that, it means all other degrees of freedoms, the value all other degrees of freedoms are constrained. Okay. So, what we do is, we now find out all this expression, all the elements of this expression. Okay. Let us do that. Okay. So, uh, so, this is the uh, this is the this is the stiffness matrix we have just now discussed what are the what are these uh, what is what are these values means um, let us now let us now find out um, suppose uh, first we'll give an unit uh, a unit value along the degrees of freedom one and then find out what are the forces developed in other degrees of freedom means we'll try to find out all these uh, values okay now, so suppose the beam is this and if we do that all other degrees of freedom will be constrained. Okay? Suppose this is the all degrees of freedom first to be constrained and now this is ith point and this is jth point. Okay? Now, next what we do is next we give an unit displacement along degrees of freedom 1. So, this is degrees of freedom 1. So, along if we give unit displacement suppose the deformed shape will be like this. Okay, and this value is 1 and this is, so this value is 1. 
oh, oh. Uh, this value is 1. Okay? Now, next is what we have to do is once we have this, uh, once we give that unit displacement along, uh, along uh, this 1, the next what we have to do is next we have to find out what are the forces developed uh, in, uh, uh, in along a different degrees of freedom. Let us see what are the forces developed along degrees of freedom. Now again draw the same thing. Suppose this is the this is the undeformed configuration once again, and corresponding deformed configuration will be like this. Okay, this value is one. Now let us see what are the forces developed. The forces developed will be will be this force and then a rotation will be developed here. Similarly, this force and a rotation will be developed here. Okay. Now, this value is unit displacement and uh, the because of this displacement, what is the corresponding what is the corresponding forces developed here will be k 1 1 that is the unit displacement because of the unit displacement. Similarly, what is the force developed along these degrees of freedom? It will be k 2 2 and this will be k 2 1, this will be k 3 1 and this will be k 4 1. Okay? Now, what we have to find out? We have to find out what are these values of k 1 1, k 2 1, k 3 1, k 4 1. We will not determine, we will not analyze this structure and find the value of, find the values of these stiffnesses, these, these elements of this uh, different elements. We already have structural analysis one where you have studied already how to determine indeterminate structure, determinate structure, you study different methods like slope deflection method, consistent deformation method. You can apply any method to solve this structure. This problem is you take a fixed beam, apply some unit, uh, uh, unit translation at one joint and then find out the forces developed, what are the reactions developed at other joints and if we do that then the values that we will get is like this. See k 1 1 will be k 1 1, this will be the reactions, the vertical reaction, this value will be 12 e i by 12 e i by L cube and then k 2 1, k 2 1 means moment developed at the fixed end at the at the at the ith end, this will be 6 e i by L square and then similarly K41 will be K41 will be minus 12 EI by L cube and K31 will be uh, this will be K31 the reaction K31 and K41 will be 6 EI by L square. So, you can please do this exercise and then check whether these values are you are getting or these values are or not. What you have to do is you have to take a fixed beam and apply you already have done in a slope deflection method or more three moment theorem if there is a support settlement then how to what is the effect of support settlement. It is exactly that you have a fixed beam you give a support displacement or support settlement at one particular support and find out due to that uh, due to the unit displacement unit settlement of support what would be the corresponding reactions at different ends and if you find out those reactions and those reactions will be these components of the stiffness matrices. Okay. So, this is for first column. So, this column correspond to the forces developed along different degrees of freedom due to the unit value of degrees of freedom 1. Let us now do it let us now give unit value of degrees of freedom 2 and find out what are the forces in different what are the forces develop in other uh, along other degrees of freedom. We do the same exercise. So, now we are interested in to find out this column. Okay. This is 2 1. Okay. What we have to do is again first draw the undeformed configuration. Undeformed configuration is this and this is uh, fixed end and then we have to give a unit displacement. Recall our uh, unit displacement against second degrees of freedom. Second degrees of freedom is a rotation. Recall our sign convention is uh, rotation along anti-clockwise direction is positive. So, let us rotate it and when we rotate it, when we apply unit value along degrees of freedom 2, then all other degrees of freedom will be 0. Okay? So, if we do that, it will be something like this. 
So, essentially the support this is something like this. Okay. This value is unit rotation, this value is 1. Okay. Now, this is ith point, this is ith point and this is jth point. Now, if we have this, then what would be the corresponding uh, forces developed? The corresponding forces developed will be, uh, will be you, have, you have a vertical reaction in this direction and then you have corresponding moment in this direction, we have vertical reaction in this direction and corresponding moment in this direction. Now, as per definition, because of this unit displacement at 2, as per definition, then these values will be these values will be k, this will be k 1 2 and then this will be k 2 2 and this value will be k 3 2 and this finally will be k 4 2, this entire column. Now, again if we apply any method that you have learned in structural analysis 1, apply unit rotation and find out the reactions at different points and if you do that, the values that you will get is, I am just writing the values, k 1 2 will be, say k 1 2 will be will be 6 e i by 6 e i by l square l square k 2 2 which is the moment uh, this will be 4 e i by l and then k 3 2 this vertical reactions this vertical reaction this will be 6 e i by minus 6 e i by uh, l square and final k 4 2 will be 2 e i by l. Okay. So, this I leave it to you uh, to check the values. So, this is for the second column. Now, let us do the do it for third column. Third column is what? Third column is uh, give unit value along degrees of, degrees of freedom 3 and find out what are the uh, reactions along other degrees of, along all the degrees of freedom. So, third will be again the same thing if we draw the undeformed configuration, this is the undeformed configuration. We have to give the degrees of freedom well, unit value along degrees of freedom 3, degrees of freedom 3 was it is ith point, it is jth point, degrees of freedom 3 was the translation vertical direction at jth point, then draw the draw the corresponding uh, deformed shape, the deformed shape will be, so this value is, this value is 1, right. If this value is 1, then we have, we have a force and then reactions and similarly we have force and reactions, we have the force in this direction and reaction in this directions, right. And these values will be, this will be k 1 3 k 1 3 the force developed along degrees of freedom 1 due to unit value of degrees of freedom 3. This will be k 2 3 force developed along degrees of freedom 2 due to unit values of degrees of freedom 3. K this will be k 3 3 this is force developed along degrees of freedom 3 due to the unit values of degrees of freedom 3 and finally, this will be k 4 3 k 4 3. Okay. So, these are the all the values and similarly, you can solve it and find out the expression of different the stiffness coefficients. And the finally, if we take the last one, last column, this is the column where you have to give unit degrees of freedom at uh, along the degrees of freedom 4. So, this is the this is the undeformed configuration and what would be the corresponding deformed configuration, you have to give unit values. Re again recall your rotation along anti-clockwise direction is positive. So, this deflection will be something like this. So, this is this is your 1 and then what are the forces we have? This force will be k 1 4, k 1 4, then reaction will be k 2 4, and then this force will be k 3 4 and final reactions will be k 4 4. And again we can solve it and find out what are the components of these values. Now, finally, if you do that, then what we finally have is this, the final stiffness matrix will be having like this. Um, you have to, it is now I leave it to you to check the components of different stiffness matrices. But remember when we have written this stiffness matrix, our sign convention is the translation in upward direction is positive, 
and the rotation uh, anti clockwise direction both moments and the rotation anti clockwise direction is positive and then we have this stiffness matrix stiffness matrix so this is a stiffness matrix for any arbitrary member whose length is l and young's modulus is e and second moment of area is i now we can have different such members in a structure having different lengths different uh, flexural rigidity and therefore we can have different stiffness matrices for different members and the next class what we do is we see take an example where we have we have more than one member and find out and write the stiffness matrices for both the members and then see how to assemble them to get the global stiffness matrix this is the local this is the element stiffness matrix or the member stiffness matrix this gives you the force displacement relation for a given member but what we want is we want the force displacement relation for the entire structure for that we need global stiffness matrix next class we will see what would be the global how to assemble them we have done that exercise in the context of truss we will see how that is to be done for beam problem so next class we will see what is um, we will assemble them and find out the global stiffness matrix i stop here today see you in the next class thank you